I fumble with my keys, exhausted after another long shift at the diner. As I open the door to my tiny apartment, I freeze. The living room is trashed, empty beer cans and pizza boxes strewn everywhere, and there, sprawled on my couch, are the last two people I ever expected to see. Audrey? Richard? What the hell are you doing here? I demand, my voice shaking with a mix of shock and anger. My sister looks up at me lazily, a smirk on her perfectly made-up face. Oh, hey, sis, hope you don't mind. We're crashing here for a bit. Richard barely acknowledges me, his eyes glued to the big-screen TV he must have brought. Excuse me. You can't just break into my home. I'm seething now, the audacity of these two, after everything they've put me through. Break in? Come on, Liv, we're family, Audrey scoffs. Besides, it's not like we have anywhere else to go. Richard's business went under, and we're a little strapped for cash at the moment. I can't believe what I'm hearing. My so-called family, who disowned me when I needed them most, now have the nerve to invade my space uninvited. Ten years ago, when I found out I was pregnant at eighteen, my wealthy parents gave me an ultimatum. Get an abortion, or get out. I chose my baby. I chose Lily. And I've spent the last decade working my ass off to provide for her without a cent from them. And what makes you think I'm going to let you stay here? I cross my arms defiantly. Richard finally looks at me, a condescending sneer on his face. Let's be real. It's not like you're doing much better than us. I mean, a waitress? Really, Olivia? His words cut deep, but I refuse to let it show. I work hard for what I have, which is more than I can say for you two. You need to leave now. Audrey stands up, wobbling slightly. I can tell she's already tipsy. Don't be such a bitch, Liv. It's just for a little while until we get back on our feet. You're not really going to kick out your own sister, are you? I hesitate, my resolve wavering. As much as I resent Audrey, a part of me still remembers the bond we once shared before money and status tore our family apart. Just then I hear the patter of small feet and Lily appears in the doorway, her eyes wide as she takes in the scene. Mommy, who are these people? I pull her close, shielding her from their judgmental stares. No one important, baby. They were just leaving. But as I look back at Audrey and Richard's smug faces, I realize with sinking certainty that they have no intention of going anywhere. They've already made themselves at home in my life, and something tells me getting rid of them won't be so easy this time. The next morning, I wake up to the sound of Lily crying. I rush out to find her standing in the kitchen, tears streaming down her face as Richard towers over her. I told you to keep it down, you little brat! he yells, his face red with anger. What the hell do you think you're doing? I shout, pushing past him to gather Lily in my arms. She's just a child, Richard scoffs. Maybe if you'd taught her some manners, I wouldn't have to discipline her. I see red. You have no right to discipline my daughter. This is my home, my rules. Audrey saunters in, clearly nursing a hangover. God, can you keep it down? My head is pounding. She surveys the mess in the kitchen, dishes piled high in the sink, Liv, would it kill you to clean up a bit? This place is a disaster. I take a deep breath, trying to control my rage. I've been a little busy working to pay the bills, something you two clearly know nothing about. Richard steps towards me, his voice low and threatening. Watch your mouth. You should be grateful we're even gracing you with our presence. Grateful? I laugh bitterly. For what? Freeloading off me? Mistreating my kid? You're a real class act, Richard. He grabs my arm, his grip painfully tight. Listen here, you little. A loud knock at the door interrupts him. I wrench my arm away, glaring at him as I go to answer it. It's Jess, my co-worker and best friend. Her eyes widen as she takes in my disheveled appearance and Lily's tear-stained face. Hey, is everything okay? I thought I heard shouting. I glance back at Audrey and Richard, who have retreated to the living room. No, everything's not okay. Can we talk outside? We step out into the hallway and I unload everything, how Audrey and Richard showed up out of the blue, their entitled attitudes, the way they've been treating Lily. Jess listens intently, her brow furrowed with concern. Olivia, you can't let them walk all over you like this. You need to stand up for yourself and Lily. I sigh heavily. I know, but they're family. I can't just kick them out on the street. Family doesn't treat each other this way, Jess says firmly. They're toxic, Liv. You need to set boundaries, or they'll bleed you dry. Her words hit home. I know she's right. 
I can't keep living like this, constantly on edge in my own home. When I go back inside, Audrey and Richard are lounging on the couch, watching TV like they own the place. We need to talk, I say, mustering up all my courage. If you're going to stay here, there have to be some ground rules. Richard mutes the TV, looking at me with disdain. Ground rules? Who do you think you are? The person whose roof you're under, I snap back. For starters, you will treat my daughter with respect. No more yelling at her or disciplining her. That's my job. Audrey rolls her eyes. Fine. Whatever. Anything else, your highness? I ignore her sarcasm. Yes, you need to start contributing around here. Cleaning up after yourselves. Pitching in for groceries. I'm not running a free hotel. Richard stands up, getting in my face. You should be thanking us for even lowering ourselves to stay in this dump. You're nothing but a deadbeat single mom who got knocked up too young. Lily's probably going to end up just like you, another welfare case popping out bastards. His venomous words steal the breath from my lungs. Rage courses through me, white-hot and all-consuming. In that moment, something inside me snaps. I don't care if they're family. I don't care if I have to live in my car. I will not let them disrespect me or my daughter for one more second. I will make them regret ever darkening my door. They have no idea who they're messing with, but they're about to find out. Over the next few days, the situation with Audrey and Richard goes from bad to worse. They lounge around my apartment like it's their personal palace, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. I come home from work to find dirty dishes piled in the sink, beer bottles littering the coffee table, and Audrey passed out on the couch in the middle of the afternoon. Richard is nowhere to be seen, which is a small mercy. But my relief is short-lived when I check the mail and find a stack of overdue bills, credit cards, utilities, even a notice from my landlord about late rent. Panic rises in my throat. I've always been so careful with money, budgeting down to the last penny to make sure Lily and I have what we need. But with two extra mouths to feed and Audrey and Richard's reckless spending, I'm drowning fast. I confront Audrey when she finally rouses from her drunken stupor. What the hell is all this? I demand, waving the bills in her face. You two need to start pulling your weight around here. I can't afford to support your lavish lifestyle. She has the audacity to look annoyed. Relax, Liv. It's just a few bills. I'm sure you can pick up some extra shifts at that greasy spoon you work at. A few bills? I sputter in disbelief. Audrey, this is hundreds of dollars. Money I don't have, because I'm too busy paying for your alcohol and Richard's gambling habit. Her eyes narrow. Oh, so we're a burden to you now? Maybe if you'd made better choices, you wouldn't be in this situation. You think Mom and Dad are proud of their daughter slinging hash browns for a living? Her words are like a slap in the face. I reel back, fighting tears. Get out, I whisper, my voice trembling with barely contained rage. What? I said get out. I scream, no longer caring about the neighbors or Lily napping in the next room. I want you and your deadbeat husband out of my house now! Just then, Richard bursts through the front door, his eyes wild and bloodshot. What's with all the yelling? Can a man get some peace and quiet in his own home? This is not your home, I seethe. I want you both gone today. He laughs, a cruel, mocking sound. Or what? You'll call the cops. Have us arrested? Face it, Olivia. You're stuck with us. No one else wants a pathetic charity case like you. Something inside me snaps. Before I can stop myself, I'm lunging at him, my hands clawing at his smug face. He stumbles back in surprise, but quickly regains his footing. You little bitch, he snarls, shoving me hard. I fall backwards, my head cracking against the wall. Through the ringing in my ears, I hear Lily's frightened cry. Mommy! She runs to me, throwing her tiny arms around my neck. I hold her close, my vision blurring with tears. Richard stands over us, his lip curled in disgust. You see that, Lily? Your mommy is a pathetic weakling. A mistake just like you. Rage, pure and hot, courses through my veins. In that moment, I make a vow. I will do whatever it takes to protect my daughter from these monsters. No matter the cost, no matter how far I have to go, I will make them pay for every cruel word, every heartless act. They think they've broken me. They think they've won. But they have no idea the depths a mother will go to for her child. They messed with the wrong woman and I won't rest until I've destroyed them, just like they tried to destroy me. The next day at work, I'm a zombie, 
going through the motions of taking orders and refilling coffee cups. My mind is consumed with thoughts of Audrey and Richard and how I'm going to get them out of my life for good. Jess corners me in the break room, her eyes filled with concern. Olivia, what's going on? You look like hell. I break down, spilling everything that's happened in the past 24 hours. Jess listens intently, her face growing more and more horrified. That's it. We need to do something, she says firmly when I finish. Those two are toxic, Liv. They're going to ruin your life if you let them. But what can I do? I ask helplessly. They're family, Jess. I can't just throw them out on the street. Jess is quiet for a moment, then her eyes light up. Maybe we don't have to. I have an idea. She pulls out her phone and starts tapping away furiously. After a few minutes, she shows me the screen. Look at this. I did some digging on Richard. Turns out he's got a criminal record. Fraud, embezzlement, even assault charges. And there's an eviction notice for their last apartment. They were kicked out for non-payment of rent. My jaw drops. How did you find all this? Jess grins. I have my ways. The point is, we have leverage now. If they won't leave willingly, maybe we can force them out another way. A plan starts to form in my mind. It's risky, and more than a little underhanded. But, at this point, I'm desperate. That night, I borrow a hidden camera from Jess and set it up in the living room. If I can catch Audrey and Richard's abuse and mistreatment on video, I'll have proof to back up my claims. For the next few days, I bide my time, letting the camera roll as they continue their reign of terror. Richard's verbal tirades against Lily, Audrey's drunken rampages, it's all there in high definition. On the fourth day, I come home to find Lily crying in her room, a red handprint vivid on her cheek. Rage consumes me. I storm into the living room, where Richard is watching TV, beer in hand. What the hell did you do to my daughter? I scream. He looks at me with bored eyes. The little brat wouldn't shut up. She needed to be taught a lesson. I lunge at him, but Audrey steps between us. Olivia, calm down. It was just a little tap. She's fine. A little tap? I'm shaking with fury. You hit my child, you monster! Richard stands up, looming over me. Listen here, you ungrateful witch. We've done nothing but try to help you, and this is how you repay us? By accusing us of abuse? Help me? I laugh bitterly. All you've done is make my life a living hell. Well, guess what? I'm done. I want you out of my house now. Audrey scoffs. And where exactly are we supposed to go? In case you haven't noticed, we're broke. I smile, a cold, dangerous thing. Oh, I've noticed, which is why I've come up with a little proposal. I pull out the fake lease agreement I've drawn up. Sign this, agreeing to pay rent and follow my rules, or I go to the police with evidence of your abuse and criminal history. Richard's face pales. What evidence? I nod towards the hidden camera. Smile, Richard. You're on candid camera. He lunges for the device, but I'm faster. I snatch it up, holding it behind my back. So what's it going to be? I ask calmly. Sign the lease and start acting like decent human beings, or face the consequences of your actions? They exchange a look, realizing they're trapped. With a snarl of rage, Richard grabs the pen and scribbles his name on the line. I feel a rush of triumph. For the first time in weeks, I'm in control. But I know this is only the beginning. They may have signed the lease, but something tells me getting rid of Audrey and Richard for good won't be that simple. They've underestimated me for the last time. Now it's my turn to make their lives hell. With the signed lease in hand, I feel a surge of power. For once, I have the upper hand against Audrey and Richard. But I know I can't let my guard down. They're like cornered animals, and there's no telling what they might do. Over the next few days, I put my plan into motion. While they're out drowning their sorrows at the local bar, I quietly pack up my belongings and lilies, moving them to a storage unit across town. Jess helps me, offering moral support and an extra set of hands. Are you sure about this, Liv? She asks as we load the last box into her car. It's a big risk, antagonizing them like this. I nod, my jaw set with determination. I'm done being their doormat, Jess. It's time they learned that actions have consequences. When Audrey and Richard stumble home that night, they're greeted by a nearly empty apartment. I sit calmly on the couch, the fake lease in my lap. What the hell is this? Richard slurs, his eyes bloodshot and wild. Where's all your stuff? I smile coldly. Consider it a precautionary measure, in case you two decide to go back on our little agreement. Audrey snatches the lease from my hands, 
scanning it with a furrowed brow. This doesn't look like the lease we signed. That's because it's not, I reply, standing up to face them. The lease you signed was a fake, but this one, this one is very real. And if you don't want me to turn over the evidence of your crimes to the police, you'll sign it and abide by my rules. Richard takes a menacing step towards me. You little bitch. You think you can blackmail us? We'll destroy you. I laugh, a harsh, humorless sound. Go ahead and try. But know this. I have copies of that video in multiple locations. If anything happens to me or Lily, it goes straight to the authorities. And with your record, Richard, I doubt you'll fare well in prison. He blanches, his bravado faltering. Audrey puts a restraining hand on his arm. What do you want, Olivia? She asks, her voice tight with barely contained rage. I want you gone, I say simply. Out of my house, out of my life, you have twenty-four hours to pack your things and leave. If you're not out by then, I make one phone call, and your cozy little setup here comes crashing down around you. Richard looks like he wants to argue, but Audrey silences him with a look. Fine, she spits out. We'll go. But don't think for a second this is over. I smile, a genuine one this time. Oh, I know it's not, but from now on we play by my rules, and rule number one, don't ever mess with my family again. They retreat to the bedroom, slamming the door behind them. I sag back onto the couch, my heart racing. I can't believe I just did that. But beneath the fear, there's a glimmer of something else. Pride. Satisfaction. For the first time in my life, I stood up for myself and for Lily. I took control of my own destiny. I know the road ahead won't be easy. Audrey and Richard aren't the type to go down without a fight. But I'm ready for whatever they throw at me. I glance at the clock, counting down the hours until they'll be out of my life for good. They thought they could break me. They thought wrong. I am Olivia Davis, single mother, survivor, and now a force to be reckoned with and heaven help anyone who tries to stand in my way. The next twenty-four hours are the longest of my life. I pace the apartment, jumping at every sound, half expecting Audrey and Richard to come bursting out of the bedroom with renewed vengeance. But as the minutes tick by and the deadline approaches, there's no sign of them. I start to wonder if they've actually taken my threat seriously and fled in the night. Just as I'm about to breathe a sigh of relief, I hear a crash from the bedroom. I rush over to find Richard tearing through the closet, a duffel bag open on the bed. What are you doing? I demand, my heart in my throat. He whirls around, his eyes wild and bloodshot. What does it look like? I'm getting my stuff and getting the hell out of here. I stand my ground, crossing my arms. You have thirty minutes left. I suggest you hurry. He sneers at me, zipping up the bag with a violent tug. You think you're so clever, don't you? With your little video and your fake lease, well, guess what? You're nothing. A pathetic, washed-up nobody who got knocked up too young. I feel my cheeks flush with anger, but I refuse to take the bait. And you're a criminal and an abuser who preys on those weaker than you. Now get out of my house. He takes a step towards me, his fists clenched. Or what? You'll call the cops? Go ahead. I'll be long gone before they get here. Just then Lily appears in the doorway, her eyes wide with fear. Mommy, what's going on? Richard's gaze snaps to her, a cruel smile twisting his lips. Look who it is, the little mistake herself. Before I can react, he grabs Lily by the arm, yanking her towards him. She cries out in pain and fear, and something inside me snaps. I lunge at Richard, my hands clawing at his face. Let her go, you monster. He laughs, a harsh, ugly sound, and shoves Lily aside. She stumbles, falling hard against the dresser. Lily, I scream, trying to get to her, but Richard blocks my path. You stupid bitch, he snarls, his hand closing around my throat. I should have done this a long time ago. Black spots dance in my vision as he squeezes, cutting off my air. I claw at his hands, but he's too strong. Just as I'm about to black out, I hear a sickening thud. Richard's eyes roll back in his head, and he crumples to the ground. Audrey stands behind him, a lamp clutched in her shaking hands. Oh my God, she whispers, her face pale. Is he? I scramble to Lily, gathering her in my arms. She's crying, a nasty bruise already forming on her cheek. Shh, baby, it's okay. I soothe, even as my own heart races with adrenaline. You're safe now. I turn to Audrey, my eyes hard. Get him out of here. Now. She nods, still in shock, and starts dragging Richard's unconscious form towards the door. 
I grab my phone with trembling hands and dial 911. Yes, hello? I need to report an assault. My brother-in-law attacked me and my daughter. As I give the operator my address, I feel a grim sense of satisfaction. I warned Richard what would happen if he crossed me. Now he'll face the consequences. The police arrive in minutes, taking statements and photos of Lily's injuries. They cart Richard off in handcuffs as he starts to come to, spitting curses and threats. Audrey watches from the sidelines, her face a mask of misery. Olivia, please, she begs. Don't do this. He's my husband. I look at her coldly. He stopped being your husband the moment he laid a hand on my child. Actions have consequences, Audrey. It's time you both learned that. As the police pull away and the adrenaline fades, I hug Lily close, whispering reassurances. We'll be okay. We survived. And Richard will rot in prison for what he's done. I'll make sure of it. The next few days pass in a blur of police interviews and doctor's appointments. Lily is shaken but resilient. The bruise on her cheek fades, but the memory of Richard's attack lingers. Audrey is conspicuously absent, holed up in a motel somewhere. I don't reach out, and she doesn't attempt to contact me. Until one evening, as I'm putting Lily to bed, there's a tentative knock at the door. I open it to find Audrey standing there, her eyes red, rimmed, and puffy. What do you want? I ask coldly, blocking the entrance with my body. She takes a shuddering breath. Olivia, please, I need to talk to you. Against my better judgment, I let her in. We sit at the kitchen table, an uncomfortable silence stretching between us. I'm sorry, she says finally, her voice small, for everything. I never meant for things to get so out of hand. I scoff. Spare me the crocodile tears, Audrey. You stood by and watched while your husband terrorized me and Lily. You're just as guilty as he is. She flinches as if I've slapped her. I know. I was weak. I let him control me, manipulate me. But I swear, I never wanted anyone to get hurt. But they did get hurt? I snap. Your own niece, Audrey. How could you let him do that to her? Tears spill down her cheeks. I'm sorry she whispers. I'm so sorry. I'll do anything to make it right. Just please don't turn over the evidence to the police. Don't send Richard to prison. I stare at her incredulously. Are you serious right now? After everything he's done, you want me to let him off the hook? She reaches across the table, grasping my hands. I'll leave him, Olivia. I'll cut all ties. You'll never have to see either of us again. Just please, have mercy. I yank my hands away, standing up so abruptly, my chair clatters to the floor. Mercy? Like the mercy he showed when he hit Lily, when he tried to choke the life out of me? I'm shaking with rage, my vision blurred with angry tears. No, Audrey. I gave you chance after chance to do the right thing, but you chose him every single time. Well, now it's time to face the consequences. Her face crumples. Olivia, please, I'm begging you. I walk to the door and open it, my expression hard as stone. Get out of my house, and don't ever come back. She leaves her sobs echoing down the hallway. I close the door and lean against it, my knees giving out as I slide to the floor. I bury my face in my hands, allowing myself a moment of grief. Grief for the sister I once loved, for the family we could have been. But that family is gone now, shattered beyond repair, and I have to focus on the family I have left, Lily and myself. The next day, I march into the police station and turn over all the evidence I've gathered, the hidden camera footage, the audio recordings of Richard's threats, the photos of Lily's injuries. The detective assures me it's an open and shut case. With Richard's prior record, he's looking at serious prison time. I feel a weight lift off my shoulders as I walk out of the station. It's over. We're free. In the weeks that follow, I hear through the grapevine that Audrey has hit rock bottom. She's lost her fancy apartment, her designer clothes, her high-society friends— She's working a minimum wage job, struggling to make ends meet. A small, petty part of me relishes her downfall. But mostly, I just feel a hollow sort of sadness. She had so many chances to change, to be better. But she chose her path, just as I've chosen mine. And I know, with bone-deep certainty, that I made the right choice. For Lily, for myself, for the life we're going to build together. A life free from fear, from manipulation, from toxic family ties. A life that's truly ours. Six months later, Lily and I have settled into our new life. Without the constant threat of Audrey and Richard hanging over us, we've both begun to heal, to thrive. Lily's nightmares have faded, replaced by the normal dreams and dramas of a preteen girl. 
She's made friends at her new school, joined the soccer team, even started talking about boys. As for me, I've thrown myself into my work, earning a promotion and a raise. For the first time in my adult life, I feel a sense of stability, of security. But just as I'm starting to let my guard down, to believe that the past is truly behind us, I receive a letter. The return address is from the women's shelter downtown. With shaking hands, I tear it open. Olivia, it begins in achingly familiar handwriting. I know I'm the last person you want to hear from, but I needed to reach out to apologize one more time. I scan the letter, my heart racing. Audrey tells me she's been sober for three months, that she's filed for divorce from Richard that she's trying to turn her life around. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, she writes, but I hope someday you can find it in your heart to give me another chance, not for my sake but for Lily's. She deserves to know her aunt, to have a family beyond just the two of you. I put down the letter, my mind reeling. A part of me wants to crumple it up, to toss it in the trash and never think of Audrey again. But another part, a part I thought long dead, stirs to life. The part that remembers the sister I once loved, the bond we once shared. I think of Lily, of the family she's been deprived of, grandparents who disowned us, an aunt and uncle who nearly destroyed us. Can I really deny her a chance to have a relationship with Audrey? Can I let my bitterness, my anger, rob her of that? I take a deep breath and pick up the phone. With trembling fingers, I dial the number for the women's shelter. Audrey? I say when she answers, my voice shaking. It's Olivia. There's a long pause, then a shaky exhale. Olivia, I didn't think you'd call. I close my eyes, stealing myself. I got your letter, and I've been thinking. I meant every word, she says quickly. I know I've done so much damage, caused so much pain, but I'm trying, Olivia, I'm really trying. I take a deep breath. I believe you, and I'm willing to give you a chance. One chance, Audrey, for Lily's sake. She lets out a choked sob. Thank you, thank you so much. I won't let you down, I promise. We make plans to meet for coffee, to take things slow. As I hang up, I feel a mix of emotions swirling inside me. Hope, fear, uncertainty. But above all, a sense of peace. Because I know I'm doing the right thing, not just for Lily, but for myself. Forgiveness isn't about forgetting or condoning what's been done. It's about releasing the hold the past has over you, about choosing to move forward. And as difficult as it may be, I'm ready to take that step to let go of the anger and the pain, and to embrace the possibility of a new beginning. For Lily, for Audrey, and for the family we could be, if we're willing to put in the work. It won't be easy. There will be setbacks, misunderstandings, old wounds reopened. But I have to believe it will be worth it, that someday we'll look back on this moment as the turning point, the day we chose to be better, to be stronger, to be a family again. And as I look out the window at the bright blue sky, I feel a flicker of hope, of optimism for the future. A future where Lily has an aunt who loves her, where I have a sister to lean on, where we're not defined by our past mistakes but by the choices we make moving forward. A future that's ours to shape, ours to build, one day at a time.